Okay. Um, so it was mentioned in the comments a few days back um, how going through the history videos that it would be interesting to see strength of division. Which divisions are truly the best? Which divisions uh, were best on average? That kind of thing. Now, I will admit it's not an entirely flawless system to try to grade divisions and all of that. So I've done my best to add some qualifiers as well. Um, now, there's no divisions worth mentioning until 1967, which is good because that's where uh, I've started with goaltending videos and all that. So it's good to start with 67, 68 for this one. So what I've done is I've got the average point total for teams in the divisions. I've got your division winners on the left, your division's last place team on the right. So I went by the official standing. Sometimes there's a tie for last place. I didn't put extra ones up here. It's going to be a challenge to do 93 through 2018. And I'm going to try to get that all onto one board as well. And I think we'll see greater parity uh, in the ones from from the last say 10 to 15 years but we'll see because i don't know i was honestly surprised at the huge difference between some of these divisions now the east and the west are the only divisions from 67 68 to 73 74 at no point is the west better than the east the the biggest discrepancy you'll find is the east and the west in 69 9 or 69 70 where uh the where the East had 91.3 points on average, and it's 60.6 points on average for the West. So that's 30, almost 31 points difference between being a Western team and an Eastern team. And it led to teams making the playoffs in the West that would not have made the playoffs in the East. And this is a system that they realized was flawed. So in 70-71, the Chicago Blackhawks are moved to the West. What that does is it drops the differential from 31 down to 10.5 which is still a differential. It's still a big differential, but it's better. And 71-72, that drops down to 6.9 points. Uh, you'll notice Vancouver's last in the East in 71-72, because for the first little while in their existence, they were an East Coast team. 72-73, um, uh, the Islanders managed to be the team that, uh, that, that finishes below Vancouver in the East. And when I see East Coast, I mean, they were playing in the East Coast. They weren't an East Coast team. They're playing in Vancouver, but still, it's so weird. Um, the NHL strange in how they do things. 72-73, uh, the Islanders are the worst team, and the, the California Seals are dragging down the West, while Montreal and Chicago are holding down the fort at the top. 73-74, it is a 6.7 point difference between the two. Um, in 74-75, we see four divisions where there were two, and the Patrick division is by far the best division at 93 points on average. Uh, a Adams division, 84 points, comes in second, followed by the Norris at 77.2 points. It is worthy of note that Washington only had 21 points that year. So that drags the entire division down quite a bit. The Smythe division, 69.2 points on average, makes them the worst. Uh, the, the Smythe, and that's going to be a, a theme for a while here. 75-76, the Patrick, 92 points. They're the leader. The Adams, 91.5, is right behind them, followed by the Norris at 77.6. Again, the Capitals are dragging that down. And yet, in the Smythe, at 63.6 points because they have the Colorado Rockies and the Kansas City Scouts weighing them down at different times. 76-77, uh, 92.5 points for the Patrick, 88.5 points for the Adams, 79.8 points for the Norris, and 63.4 points on average for the Smythe. Uh, the Smythe is by far the worst division at this stage, and that's going to change soon, uh, but that's going to change with realignment that's coming. 77-78, 94 points for the Patrick, 91.7 points. For the Adams, even though they have the Cleveland Barons there, 80 points for the Norris. So the Norris gets up to a, a 500 record. And uh, the Smythe, 59.4. It's just getting worse. The NHL is playing more games, and the Smythe is finding ways to get less points. 59.4, uh, you would think would be the low point. You'd be wrong. 78-79, uh, the Patrick average is 98 points. That's crazy when you just think about it. The average is 98. Followed by the Norris at 81. The Adams at 67.4, and the Smythe at 56.5, which is the lowest number on the board, 
And I don't think any other division will ever get that low again. You can't. You have three-point games now. Uh, 56.5. And I'm, I'm looking forward to doing this with 93 through 2018. Because you should see a difference when the three-point game was instituted. You should suddenly see like averages just went up for everybody. Uh, but 56.5 is a low point. 79.80. Your top division is the Patrick with 88.6. Adams, 87.8. Uh, the Norris, 78. And then the Smythe, 68. So the Smythe, 68 points. That's pretty bad, but it's still better than 56 or 59 or 63. So they're they're getting better. 80-81. The Patrick is, again, the best division at 88.6, followed by the Adams, 84.4. The Norris, 78.2, and the Smythe, 70.6. You'll see Arizona on there because that's the old Winnipeg Jets. And that's their franchise, and they were the worst in the Smythe. 81-82, uh, we see a difference, a change in the divisions. So the divisions get moved around. So you'll see that I started ordering them differently as well here. I went Norris, Smythe, Adams, and Patrick. The Adams is the best division at 88, followed by the Patrick at 87.4. The Smythe 75 is not last because now the Norris is last at 71.3. And that's going to be a theme now. Uh, 82, 83, the Adams is the best at 84.4, followed by the Smythe at 79.8, the Patrick at 78.1, and the Norris at 78. That's, that's as close to parity as we get in this era. And it's pretty impressive. 83, 84, the Adams 88.4, the Smythe 81.2, the Patrick 79.1, and there's the Norris in last, again, at 71.4. There's always a weak division. Uh, the 84-85 season, the Smythe is the best team. The, the, the Beggars are now the boss. 88 per points on average, although Vancouver's still the worst. Uh, the Adams, 85.2. The Patrick, 78.1. And the Norris, 69 points on average. So the Norris is starting to really flirt with some bad numbers. They do come back the following season, though. Um... In 9091, no, 85-86. Um, Adams uh, is second by the Patrick. The Patrick's 86.6. Adams, 85.8. The Smythe, 76 points. The Norse, 70.2. So 1.2 points better. 86-87. The Smythe division's the best again, 85 points. The Adams, 81.2. The Patrick is 500 at 80 points. And uh, there's the Norse in fourth again at 73.8. 87-88. The Adams is your best division at 85.6. Patrick, 83.8. Smythe's 81.6. And there's the Norris at 68.2. So again, you've got three good divisions and the, Nor and the Norris division. 88-89. Uh, the Smythe leads the way at 86. The Adams, 85.2. The Patrick, 78. The Norris, 71.2. Again, the Norris is the worst. Now, the Norris breaks that in 89.90. This is where things start to change. This, of course, is after the Gretzky trade. Things start to even out in the Smythe. And uh, the Norris were starting to see the rise of some Stanley Cup contenders. Uh, Smythe, 82.6. The Adams, 81.6. Norris is not last. They have a 79.4 average. Last now is the Patrick at 77 points on average. 90.91. Look who's first. It's the Norris, 82.4. Followed by the Smythe at 82, Patrick 78.1, and the Adams is the worst now at 77.8, thanks to the Avalanche, who at this point are in Quebec as the Nordiques. 91 92, uh, the Patrick's the best division at 88.5, followed by the Norris at 81, the Smythe 76, the Adams is the worst at 73.6. So, in my second part of this video, I will discuss 93 through to 2018. I think it's good that it got split in half because I ran out of room. Uh, because I think if I did it over 50 years, I think it's a little bit much. Even for me. The madness has to end somewhere. So when you're looking over this, there's something to consider. Your first place team in the league and last. And I didn't just go by who wins President's Trophies and whatnot. I went by statistically which teams were the best in points. Um, 68, it was Montreal with 94 points. Oakland finished last with 47. 69, it was Montreal with 103. In last place, it's Minnesota and Pittsburgh, who both had 51 points. 1970, Chicago led the league with 99 points. LA's last with 38. 1971, Boston put up an impressive 121 points. And California was last with 45. 
1972, Boston's first with 119. Vancouver, in its, in its expansion year, 48 points. Which is bad, but that's only 11 less points than they'll get in the mid-80s. Some of their seasons there were pretty bad, too. Uh, 1973, 120 points by Montreal to lead the league. Uh, the Islanders, in their first year, get 30. So uh, an expansion year doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot, because seven years after that, they'd win the Stanley Cup. 1974, Boston, 113 points, leads the league. California Seals are last with 36. 1975, there's three teams that finished first overall. Montreal, Buffalo, and Philly, 113 points. And, of course, they're not technically tied because whoever gets the most wins wins the, the top spot in the league. But Washington, there's no doubt who's last because they get 21 points that year. 1976, Montreal's first with 127. The Capitals are last with 32. And they're in the same division. So that means that this, this average of 77 is dragged down to that thanks to uh, the uh, the Capitals. 1977, the Adams moves up a little bit because Montreal has 132 points. Uh, and last place is Detroit, still in the same division, but 41 points. So that's an improvement. 1978, Montreal has 129 points to lead the league. Minnesota's last with 45. 1979, the Islanders lead the league in, in overall standings with 116 points. The Colorado Rockies, who are going to become the New Jersey Devils, have 42. 1980, Philadelphia, 116 points. Your last place teams are Colorado and Winnipeg, both with 51. 1981, it's 110 points for the Islanders and 32 points for the Winnipeg Jets, who are in last. 1982, the New York Islanders, 118 points. 49 points for uh, the Colorado Rockies in their last year in Colorado. 1983, Boston finishes with 110 points. The Hartford Whalers and the Pittsburgh Penguins tie for last place with 45 points, which is why in 84, when there was a tank job between New Jersey and Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh was bad to start with. They just made sure they got worse. Uh, the Islanders finished with 119 points, and uh, Pittsburgh finished with 38 that year. The interesting thing is that overall, that division is not the worst, even though it had Pittsburgh and New Jersey in it. It still, to statistically, was better than, than the Norris. And those 38 points are, I think, New Jersey had 41 that year, so 79 points between the two of them. Um, Buff, uh, 1985, Philly is your leader with 113 points. Toronto's last place with 48. 1986, it's Edmonton, first overall with 119. And uh, Detroit's last with 40. 1987, the Islanders, or the Islanders, the Oilers, 106 points, their first. Buffalo and New Jersey are last tied with 64 points. So that's pretty high for a last place team. That's the highest number we see for a last place team. Again, when we do 93 through 2018, we're going to see some higher point totals for last place teams. Uh, 1990, the Boston Bruins were the only team that got 100 points that year with 101. And uh, the Quebec Nordiques, 31 points. Oh, I skipped a couple. 1988, uh, Calgary gets 105 points to finish first. Minnesota's last with 51. In 1989, Calgary is tops with 117. And the Islanders are tied with Quebec for last place with 61. So the Islanders go from Stanley Cup in 83 to last place team in 89. Uh, 1991, Chicago's first in the league with 106 points. Quebec's last with 46. 1992, the Rangers are first with 105 points. San Jose, brand new expansion team, last with 39, and they expected less than 39. Looking back at when Winnipeg, came, or Winnipeg, when uh, Washington came in the league with 32, that was more what was expected, so, or 21. It was more expected to be between the 21 and 32 than the 39. So they were more competitive than they were supposed to be. Um, now, here we've got all 22 teams that are on the board and how many times they finished first in the division or last. Winnipeg didn't finish first once, finished last three times. Boston was first 11 times, did not finish last once. Buffalo first three times, didn't or finished last twice. Same with Calgary. Uh, the Hartford Whalers were first once. They were last place four times. Chicago, first place in their division 12 times in 25 years and finished last once. The Nordiques, who are now Colorado, uh, they finished first once. They finished last six times. And it's interesting how the teams that have moved didn't have a good record at this point with finishing first. 
Uh, the Minnesota North Stars, they were first twice, last four times. They've moved as well. Detroit, remarkable. Their first three times and their last ten times. That is the most times that anybody has last in a division over that period of time. The Oilers are first six times. They don't finish last, not once. The LA Kings finish first once. They finish last five times. The Montreal Canadiens win their division 15 times in 25 years, and they never finish last. They don't miss the playoffs. Uh, it's generally the way it works. I think they missed the playoffs once that whole time. Uh, Calgary, uh, not Calgary, New Jersey, uh, as Colorado and Kansas City as well. That's all included here. They never won the division. They finished last eight times. So franchise that did move twice, and that's part of it. The New York Islanders finished first six times. They finished last four times. The Rangers finished first twice, finished last three times. The Philadelphia Flyers win their division 10 times, which is behind Montreal with 15, Chicago with 12, and Boston with 11, fourth overall. They finished last twice. The Pittsburgh Penguins finished first in their division once, last four times. San Jose, the only time they're on the board is their expansion year, and uh, they finished last in the league that year. So that's it. They're 0-1. The St. Louis Blues finished first six times. They don't finish last once. The Toronto Maple Leafs don't get a first place once. They finish last seven times. The Tor or Vancouver Canucks finish first twice. They finish last five times. And the Washington Capitals finish first once. They finish in last six times. So there you go. Uh, the division standings, as it were, the division averages between 67, 68, and 91, 92. Whew, that's a lot. Uh, it's a lot to take in, and uh, I've, I've done my best to um, not trip myself up too much. It's a lot on the board, though. That's a lot of, that's a lot of madness. That's crazy. But, hey, uh, for you guys, anything... Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below as always. Uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.